Hey guys, in this video I would like to talk about this idea of a metabolic capacity or more specifically the concept that you can build up your metabolism by consuming more calories and essentially gaining more wiggle room so that you can stay lean and enjoy more food without getting fat. And this video is basically going to summarize all the great information that have come out in recent years by the best experts in the field. Uh, who have been vocal about this, Solane, Lyle, Eric, and of course there was the great reverse dieting debate. And basically we will go through the mechanisms or explanations of how uh, basically consuming more food could allow you to actually uh, gain more metabolic rate and getting away with more calories. So to really understand this thing, first we need to look at the factors that govern your metabolism. and. What we really need to understand is that there are moving and non-moving parts of this whole equation. So the non-moving parts are related to your body weight, meaning that they do move but only as fast as your body weight is moving up and down. And so it, we are not really going to discuss these concepts because it's just not what we are interested in. But there are the moving parts of this equation and those are neat. So that's non-exercise thermogenesis. And then there is of course exercise thermogenesis, so what we do in the gym there is the thermic effect of food, and there is thermal regulation. So these are really the moving parts of this equation, but even out of these things, I want to narrow it down to the actual factors that could actually be influenced by the amount of calories that we are consuming. So first, let's look at the things that are not really related to it at all. The first thing is the thermic effect of food, which is actually somewhat underrated in the sense that it, there is actually a considerable um, variation based on what you're consuming. So the thermic effect of food or how much energy your body is expending to assimilate nutrients from your food can go from 5% to all the way to 20%. And that is a pretty considerable difference if you ask me. So people, for example, who take the IIFYM philosophy too literally could actually miss out on a lot of benefits because they are consuming or might be consuming a lot of processed foods and in that scenario, the thermic effect of food is like 5% or something because your body really doesn't need to expend a lot of energy to break down and assimilate nutrients from highly processed foods like, you know, refined carbs and, and protein shakes and things like that. So you could actually put yourself in an energy deficit just by switching to a more whole foods based diet with a lot more fiber and things like that. And then there is of course the thermal regulation of your body, which is basically your body's biological thermostat, which is increasing your or decreasing your heat production uh, in relation to the environment. And that's not something that you can really take advantage of unless you move to a colder country or you're wearing looser clothes or you drink ice water all day long or something. So let's now focus on the things that you can actually influence, possibly by even adding in more calories and do a reverse diet if you like. And let's look at mechanisms and different scenarios in which this situation would actually turn out as you would want it to. So let's get into this. First scenario is a simple one. You have more energy from more food and you move around more. This of course seems very simple, but simply by eating more food, you have a little bit more vigor and you're less likely to take the escalator instead of the stairs and your spontaneous activity increases a little bit. So you're more often standing up, you're, you correct your posture more often and even things like efficiency of your skeletal muscle, things that you cannot really alter consciously might actually uh, differ because of this, because your body is sensing that you have more energy um, floating around in your body, essentially. The next scenario is that your sleep quality improves uh, because of more food, and that indirectly translates into higher energy expenditure during the day. Now, this might seem like a minor thing, but it's a pretty commonly reported thing during a, a pretty, especially a long and hard fat loss diet to become a little bit more restless and you have a harder time switching off at night and sleeping well, you wake up more often and then you have a little bit less energy during the day, the next day and you burn less calories. And by eating more food, perhaps your brain has a little bit easier of a time switching into that parasympathetic mode and sleep through the night and then you have more energy the next day. 
and that in allows you to burn more calories. So that is again a scenario whereby eating more food and do a slow reverse could actually mean that you're burning more calories. The third scenario is being able to train harder because you're eating more food. If you're able to put a couple more pounds on, your, on the bar in every set in a couple of exercises, across the weeks this can actually add up to pretty substantial changes. So uh, for some people this can come from even eating like 100 calories more per week uh, that you're just simply able to get a bit more motivation and have a bit more vigor in the gym and that allows you to burn more calories through your training. Fourth point or scenario is better adherence and consistency. Now this is more like an obligatory uh, reality check so I won't spend too much time on this one but we all know that consistency and adherence is beating everything else in this field. So by not getting into these um, binge cut cycles and other such unproductive behavioral patterns and you're able to be more consistent with your diet, that can actually allow you to make better progress and to actually over the, the long term stay leaner even though you're eating more calories because that increased caloric intake is allowing you to be more adherent to your plan, basically. Scenario five is getting into a more optimal macronutrient composition for you. And this has actually to do more with the actual macronutrient breakdown of your diet than the actual calories per se. But because you have more food, you're able to tweak the ratios of your diet more optimally. So some people unquestionably do better on very high carb diets and some people do much better on very high fat diets. And um, by eating the macronutrient breakdown that is more optimal for you, that can actually allow you to be more active during the day, have a bit more vigor, more energy, and then you of course burn a lot more calories. And I think Alberto Nunez is, is actually a good example of this because he is often mentioned as someone who has a very freakishly high metabolism based on or compared to what you would predict based on his body stats. But as far as I understand his story, he used to follow more of a high fat, lower carb diet. And then he made the switch to a very high carb and lower fat diet. And it was kind of from then on that he has been able to just eat a lot of food and stay lean and even diet down on pretty high caloric intakes. And um, if you stalk him around on YouTube, you will actually see that he is living a very, very active lifestyle and he loves hiking and doing things like that. And it might be because he is able to eat a macronutrient split that is more optimal for him and in allows him to increase his energy expenditure significantly. Scenario six is that you're able to partition more calories around your workout because you're eating more food. Now I mentioned in my other video, which was about nine weird tricks to make cutting easier, that sometimes you have to make trade-offs in order to stay within your caloric budget. And one such trade-off would be to not really capitalize on workout nutrition. But when you have more calories and you are able to make more strategic planning as opposed to necessity dictated planning, then you might be able to set up your diet plan in such a way that you can push more of your calories around your workout and that might allow you to basically partition your food in a way that allows it to go more towards muscle growth as opposed to fat gain. So this might seem like a minor thing, but again, if you do it consistently over many weeks, this can actually add up to pretty significant changes. And this is again, seems like it's because you're adding in more calories, but it's more like a downstream effect when you're basically able to make decisions and set up structures for yourself, that is making the difference, if this makes any sense. And seventh and last scenario is that your metabolic rate actually increases. And that is, there are some things like I mentioned, efficiency in your skeletal muscle or heat production that is kind of genetic and you cannot really do anything about it. And these things happen uh, without your direct control over it. But these things are changing in relation to your food intake. And in some people, these changes are a lot stronger than in other people. And, and the overfeeding studies are actually supporting this phenomenon perfectly. So when they give 2000 extra calories for two people, some people just get insanely fed, but some other people uh, don't really gain too much weight because their body is just resisting that change. And you do see these people, like some people, they eat more 
and their body is just increasing heat production like crazy and they wake up in the middle of the night and shakes and sweats and they have to kick off the blanket and they think that they're about to get a heart attack when in fact their body is just fighting against fat gain by increasing heat production. So these people do exist and there is a scenario when your body is essentially getting more and more inefficient by adding in more calories. And my guess would be that if you're doing it for long enough and persistently enough and gradually enough, then you can take advantage of these effects even though it might never be as strong as to some kind of highly adaptive uh, metabolism uh, owner. So these are the mechanisms that really are kind of conceivable to uh, let you take advantage of a reverse diet or uh, caloric increases and staying lean while eating more food. As you can see, all of these mechanisms are kind of a downstream effect, like an indirect consequence of eating more calories. And it's more so these downstream effects that are allowing you to stay lean despite eating more and not so much the fact that you're training your metabolism to run faster by actually eating more food. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with these points or, or if you think that I missed something. Uh, in my steroid related video, someone very accurately pointed out the things that I forgot to mention in that video. So if you think there is something else to be mentioned here, please let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more stuff like this, then subscribe and see you next time.